There are nine days left for debt ceiling negotiations on Capitol Hill. Still no agreement. Now, I tend to be one of those people who believe, of course, they'll be able to figure it out. It would be so bad and dangerous for the country to default on our debt that they won't let it happen, right? But in this divided political climate, with the political extremes often dragging the parties, I am getting worried, really worried. So I was interested in this proposal for the president to circumvent Congress altogether with a little-known section of the 14th Amendment. Now, we'll dig into whether that's even a legitimate legal argument, what happens then, et cetera. But the, the sticking points first in the negotiations have, have included things like caps on spending, leftover COVID-19 funds, defense funding, Biden's student loan forgiveness, boost in IRS funding that passed last year, et cetera. But those are budgetary questions, meaning how much should be allocated to certain areas or what happens to certain funds? All legitimate areas for debate. But the debt is about money that was already allocated or spent. Just a question of whether we will pay the money we already owe, which seems insane. So I was certainly open to hearing about any option to avoid a default. 11 Democratic senators now encouraging President Biden to invoke the 14th Amendment, Section 4, which says in part, the validity of the public debt of the United States authorized by law, including debts incurred for payments of pensions and bounties for services in suppressing insurrection or rebellion, shall not be questioned. Okay. Now, towards the end of the Civil War, when the Confederacy was not paying its bills, Reconstructionist Republicans wanted to make sure the federal government was not on the hook for the Confederacy's war debt. So with that said, it seems like a long shot interpretation to say it can be used here to ignore the debt ceiling. But President Biden seems to be leaving the option open, just expressing concern over whether there's enough time to do it. I'm looking at the 14th Amendment as to whether or not we have the authority. I think we have the authority. The question is, could it be done and invoked in time that it could not, would not be appealed and, as a consequence, past the date in question and still the fall of the debt? That's a question that I think is unresolved. Well, it certainly raises interesting questions. A lot of it has become politicized. But joining me now for a sober, nonpartisan analysis, Gerard Magliocca. He's a professor at Indiana University's Robert H. McKinney School of Law. He's an expert on constitutional issues. He's actually written a book about the 14th Amendment. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Nice to be here. All right. So first of all, what do you make of the argument, putting aside whether he'll do it, the practical side of it, what do you make of the argument that somehow invoking the 14th Amendment could allow the president to avoid the debt ceiling drama altogether? Well, I don't think he has that power. First of all, the 14th Amendment says nothing about the presidency at all. And it's entirely a stretch to say that it creates some presidential power that has never been exercised before. Secondly, there are a lot of things that the president can do short of ignoring the debt ceiling if we hit the debt ceiling. Uh, part of it is the negotiations that are going on now. Part of it involves sort of complicated accounting things that can be done under current law that may not be the best options ever, but they're certainly options. And they are certainly superior to sort of creating some unprecedented constitutional power to ignore what Congress has done with the debt ceiling. It, it, it sounds like President Biden is suggesting he wants to almost go to the courts first to, to get a read uh, from the courts on whether they would take this seriously. Let's listen. This is number two with President Biden, again, talking about the possibility of invoking the 14th Amendment. We have not come up with the unilateral action that could succeed in a matter of two weeks or three weeks. That's the issue. So it's, up to so it's up to lawmakers. But my hope and intention is when we resolve this problem, I find a rationale to take it to the courts to see whether or not the 14th Amendment is, in fact, something that would be able to stop it. Thank you for watching. 
Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.